Can you see, can you see uh, my slide? Yes. Okay, so I, I continue. See. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning to all. So for today, uh, no, good afternoon, I think. So for today, I would like to present regarding uh, oyster open water farming uh, for the subject SA6063 open water aquaculture system. Okay. So I, I, I introduce myself. My name is Muhammad Azri bin Muhammad. I'm a master of master of science aquaculture student P4425. This is my lecturer, Dr. A. Hassan Habib. So today, uh, my presentation regarding of five sections, section one until five. So I go to the first section regarding aspect of biology, taxonomy, the first one, anatomy of oyster. Life cycle of oyster, commercial species for oyster, and the last potential oyster in Malaysia. Okay, now I go to the taxonomy. So the oyster or uh, the the Malay called tiram is belong to the mollusca, uh, mollusca in the phylum and also belong to the bivalvia in the class. And so the species that I choose uh, is the Carostria iridale, also known as a sleeper oyster or tiram. So this is the anatomy of oyster. So oyster is made of a shell with a soft body protected by shell with two asymmetric valve. Okay, this is uh, what we call the essential part, the mantle. Uh, the two lobes connecting tissue functions for gametogenesis for breeding and also the storage of energy reserve and secretion of the cell. And the, the oyster is a filter feeders. Uh, they consume bacteria, zooplankton, and decay metal. Okay, this is the life cycle of oyster. Oyster life cycle is divided for uh, the, into the two phases: the pelagic life and the benthic life. So during the pelagic life, all the what they call the small trochophora is uh, going uh, swimming freely into the sea. Uh, maybe uh, around about 20 days and then after that uh, after 20 days they become uh, because uh, become a benthic life then then they be attached to something to grow okay so basically oyster is a hermaphrodite species which means they have a uh, two sex uh, both male and female and prototender's tendency is uh, basically uh, the oyster is tend from uh, change uh, uh, sex from male to female and also the oyster is grow in the estuaries and bays exposed to wide salinity fluctuations and also they can have uh, reached the sexual maturation during the first year and also they can uh, breed another year to another year okay this is uh, the commercial species for oyster according to Duncan 2003 as you can see the species I choose Carostria iridale sleeper oyster is main production brand production is come from the philippines so it can consist that this is the suitable species to culture in the southeast asia okay this is the potential oyster in malaysia so i highlight two species uh, the first one that i choose is carostria iridale and another one is carostria belkri okay as you can see uh, the two species is a tropical oyster found in malaysia water and the market size oyster is between 9 to 10 cm so for the carostria iridale is a prefer for local consumer due to its delicious and creamy flesh but it's small in size however uh, during the belkri species uh, it's a white scar oyster with golden brown flesh and a chewy texture it's a bigger than other toys uh, other oyster it can uh, tolerance a uh, white salinity and also can uh, withstand low salinity during the monsoon season. Now, I go to the section number two regarding the site selection. Uh, consists of criteria of oyster site selection and proposed site. Okay, this is uh, what they call uh, the criteria according to the Silva 2011 consists of the three stages. The stage number one is regarding uh, recognize the area. So basically, if the, the if, if the site is suitable, we can go to the stage number two. So the, the stage number two is regarding uh, uh, about uh, physical suitability, uh, factor of growth and survival, 
factor of uh, product quality and factor of environment sensitivity so if uh, we not suitable then we end here but if the suitable area see we go to the stage number three regarding uh, how what kind of uh, system or type of culture we can do uh, in the feasible area so basically oyster is uh, farming in the estuaries and bay uh, with a good water quality of course and co we have a consistent salinity range between 25 to 31 ppt ph between 7 to 8.5 and must be covered from strong current or wave and must avoid from the toxic algae bloom and also from the pollution discharge area which also which are commonly come from the industrial area okay this is the proposed site uh, so basically i propose to uh, have the farming culture in the parit tiram johor so resemble the name parit tiram so located in the estuary Muar river well known decades for local catching and selling oyster and near the Moa town far from the other aquaculture site boat ramp and marina okay this is uh, from the online press as you can see uh, this is the tiram or oyster in the royal uh, city of the johor which the Moa. and during the bulletin utama says that the oyster come from the Moa river is equivalent uh, oyster to the new zealand and france now I go to the section number three regarding farming design and management, which consists of type of oyster farming. Uh, I focus on the grow outside, proposed design, uh, oyster farming design layout, and oyster farming management. So the, uh, basically, according to Mat Yatim and Sander, there are three common uh, oyster farming. So number one is the rough culture. The second one is long line culture and the third one is a uh, red culture so what are the different between the three types of culture so basically rough is the can uh, hung from the rough frame in the tier which mean uh, the vertical position which uh, is a vertical uh, yeah, basically used in the shelter location so for the long line is the plastic barrel used uh, as a float and the nylon tray suspended to the long line as you can see this is a picture yes this is uh, they call the long line and also the long line is cheaper than rough and easier to construct and this is a horizontal uh, position oyster farming so uh, how about the rack system it is suitable for small tidal range uh, so the oyster grow in the trays okay as you can see this is the trays and also it's a kind of a horizontal uh, position for oyster farming okay this is uh, the proposed design okay so the long line oyster so for me this is the best uh, uh, farming uh, for the oyster okay so i choose the technology from the australia hexil hox oyster basket why because uh, this uh, 25 liter basket handle up to 10 kilo of stock it's a quad assembly and the third 10 years average service life so the details of the system i will present a uh, year uh, later in the, the the last presentation okay so wait eh Okay, now, uh, the oyster farming management. Uh, there are five uh, farming management. Number one is the cleaning. So, the oyster must be washed uh, regularly, frequently to remove the dirt and silt. So, the frequency of the cleaning depends on the local condition. And second one is thinning. Thinning is something like uh, grading something. So, so it, so it, uh, sorting oyster uh to the same size so because the overcrowd uh, oyster can lead to very slow and mortality increase uh, to the oyster and the third one is uh, we must remove the pest uh, come from the sponge acidician and barnacles which compete uh, with the oyster in regarding to food space and oxygen and also regarding predators we consume the oyster crab oyster drill and blister worm must be controlled to avoid high mortality and the last one uh, this uh, regarding folly control so the folly control as we can see i also mentioned in the farm hamdan farm so because it basically come from the net is uncleaning net so become a uh, they can have for, for this situation they can possess harmful to the oyster uh, regarding the feeding and the respiration okay Okay, now I go to the section number four regarding the farm farming problem. Okay, there are challenges, of course. Anything in the world must have a challenge. 
Okay, there are four challenges that I, uh, according to Najia, Azlisham, Hasaw, and Lebata Ramos. Okay, so the first thing is regarding the spud. Spud is a sign uh, seed in the oyster, because uh, basically in the farming we have an inconsistent supply of seed, uh, be because we are depend uh, from the wild resources. And the second one is regarding vector bacteria, viruses, and parasite. Uh, as, I, as I present earlier. So the behavior of the oyster is a filter feeder, so they consume a lot of bacteria, viruses. So we can uh, basically they can harmful uh, to human through consumption. So basically, the, we can possess uh, the fibrosis infection uh, from the uh, oyster. This, the third one is regarding also uh, regarding the the behavior of the oyster filter feeder. They also accumulate uh, chemical toxic such as heavy metal or orga organic pollutant which can possess harmful to human consumption and eh, during maybe a long period time and the last is the disease itself in the oyster basically the popular one is come from the virus oyster herpes virus and uh, another is come from the parasites uh, subset nematopsis tycosepalum and dinetic trematodes okay now I go to the world section number five, world production and economic value. Okay, according to the source uh, FAO 2020, the latest one. So the first one, of course, come from the fin fish. However, the second uh, species uh, production in the world come from the mollusk. Okay, so this is uh, the species catching uh, in the mollusk in the world. So as you can see. From oyster itself is consist of 33% uh, total of the mollusk production in the world. So it can highlight how much the oyster is uh, potential in the aquaculture. Okay, this is the world oyster, uh, oyster production in 2008. So you can see the production is increasing year by year. And on the right side, I can see. Uh, so, if sorry, uh, if uh, the, the picture is not very clear, so this the blue one is as you can see, China is the major producer of oyster in the world. Okay, now beside uh, China, so the South Korea also have uh, the second largest, and uh, now but the third one is come from Japan and basically for the US and France and others. So during the graph, uh, the France is consists uh, the highest price in the oyster per week. They can uh, during the 2012 uh, they can have uh, about nearly eight USD uh, per uh, per week. I mean in the kilo, I think. Okay, now I go to the economic value of oyster in Malaysia uh, regarding the Department of Fisheries uh, 2020. So oyster production is about 1,568 metric tons, which the retail price is about 30 to 35 uh, per kilo, and the total sales uh, recorded in 2019 is about 50.6 million ringgit Malaysia. And last, okay, so this is the this the uh, management recommendation in order to enhance the oyster uh, farming. And for me, the first one is, of course, uh, in order to have uh, what they call the uh, maximize the profit, we must uh, culture into IMTA or also known as integrated multitropic aquaculture, which means we can also put the fin fish like the Rahimi present, but we change the species to the Siakap, uh, a grouper or sea bass. And also, we can also we have integrated with the uh, seaweed farming by city. And also we can also we can uh, put a green mussel also uh, during the system. So we also uh, so with the IMTA we can also maximize the production, maximize the profit. But at the same time we can uh, apa, we can apa, uh, maintain the uh, nature. So and the second one of course we have must have a SPF seed, which means the spot must be uh, free from certain uh, certain uh, pathogens such as fibrosis and the first and the third one is for me it's the very uh, the, the important thing so because the oyster is farming in the open open aquaculture system so we we must, we must focus on the biosecurity itself 
Uh, so bas bias security is uh, kind from the the apa the site selection and also come the seed and also for the management the human management eh so the 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 base security we must uh, focus in order to have a very good result and the last uh, for my suggestion uh, to the value added of the oyster we can have a oyster processing product as you can see we can we, we also have the the market uh, the oyster sauce and also for me i mungkin i suggest uh, something about regarding maybe you can have a oyster snack or oyster product a keropok something lah maybe we can the value the product itself okay okay now uh, that's the last of my presentation this is my references okay thank you assalamualaikum wabarakatuh assalam and thank you uh, azri for your informative presentation so uh, any question for Azri? Anyone? Yes, I have two questions. So wow, Azri. two questions. Okay. <laughs> you mentioned that the muscle have a disease like vibrio, right? Yeah. Uh, actually, how to prevent the disease from occur? And it's animated to prevent the disease. And for second patients, uh, you mentioned that uh, it's a predator like a crab uh, in the muscle in the muscle oyster yeah and how, how to prevent uh, okay the huh. okay this is a very interesting uh, question so uh, regarding that my slide my last uh, uh, my last uh, slide so basically in order to prevent so the first thing is bear in mind you may has uh, must have a very good biosecurity so so if you have biosecurity you prevent the disease come to your culture site uh, consists of uh, must have uh, SPF seeds and eh? so basically be because be uh, basically in the belay so uh, mencegah lebih baik daripada mengubati so I I in English uh, translate Thank for me ah uh, yeah prevention is better than cure ah uh, yeah I say okay so basically regarding the uh, predator side so basically uh, I propose during the hexel basket so basically when we put the oyster in the basket. For me, the predator will not uh, come consume the uh, the oyster. Uh, that's, that's why for me, this is the best uh, culture system for oyster. Am I answering your question? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, this, uh, this basket I use in Malaysia too? Sorry, basket? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, yes. Uh, not the oxyl basket, but uh, maybe uh, uh, like a uh, uh, standard steel basket. This is a plastic okay. basket. So... Uh, for me, it's a very good uh, investment because they can, for me, they, uh, according to the source, they can maintain the quality during the 10 years. So, you read, uh, the maybe is quite expensive. For the plastic, I think it's very, what they call, appropriate for the 10 years farming. Okay, thank you. Nice answer. Okay, any question? Siti, Rahimi? Okay, uh, I just want to answer. Uh, <laughs> answer. <laughs> answer us, okay. Uh, fasting. <laughs> okay, uh, regarding oyster and mussel, I know it's a uh, very high value uh, for the oyster. Is that because of the taste or because of the pearl? Uh, basically, the, the pearl species... Uh, is uh, another species. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I forgot the the species. Uh, the uh, then I will come to brief you later. Okay. So basically, uh, why the oyster itself become expensive regarding the culture period. So basically, you, you can see here uh, they have two phase of the uh, uh, life cycle during the pelagic stage and the benthic phase. As you can see, the total from the larvae lies until reach the size market two years ah uh, basically basically uh, depends on the because we we we, we, uh, we farm in the open area basically the oyster is uh, depend on the what uh, the nutrient they have during that particular area so basically because because they took a uh, longer to mature to have basically meant the price is quite higher okay thank you jazzy okay you're welcome Rahimi? Mm. 
Eh, soalan saya dah ada orang tanya dah. Oh, so, please answer because I'm very smart today wearing a tie. <laughs> okay, basically like your recommendation is the oyster best product, right? Yeah. So, what type of uh, expensive product can be made from the oyster? Hmm. Okay, basically the oyster itself is quite expensive because regarding the yep. 30 to the 35 uh, ringgit per kilo. kilo. For me, maybe we can have a value added the product. Let's say maybe like a keropok something. Uh, maybe maybe uh, what they call the uh, about the keropok or the chips or something lah. Because uh, we can increase more the prices. Uh, because basically, uh, as you know, uh, you 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 have the oyster sauce. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So tiram, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so tiram in Malaysia. <laughs> Do you know that there's no tiram in the sauce? Only the flavor itself. So basically, we can if you put as let's say lah, we claim we can put 50% percent oyster. Maybe we can have very demand. Uh, nice. Yeah, we can be uh, like the dressing salad. Uh, basically, we can have put around 20 ringgit. Oh, people want people. buy because consists of 50% percent of oyster for me lah. Which we can increase the value. Uh. Okay. Another question. Good answer. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> you have all question. Uh, my only one question is source of seed. How is the source of seed? In okay, Malaysia? all right. Basically, I want to present uh, later in the prime present. Okay, basically, I identify uh, that there are two uh, supplier in the seed. Uh, but one is the, 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 the in at Kedah, uh, because they have uh, the 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 culture for the. Uh, The blue stock and also to quite similar during the grow out phase of the oyster, but then uh, they put uh, in the uh, what they call the surrounding area, so they put this part, and then uh, after they also come from the wild and then they 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 culture this part during the benthic, the benthic apa the benthic cycle they put in also in the long line, which are similar with the ref culture system. A vertical side culture. Okay, so thank you uh, for your presentation and uh, for this because four of all, I mean, all finish already on time. So thank you again. Okay, thank you. And.